So to start off, have you always lived in Augusta, Georgia? No, I have not. So how did you end up in Augusta? Associated with the military. So for me, I've always lived in Augusta, just right up the road, was born and raised, um, but I'm away at college now, so out of it for the first time. Um, so I live in, we just built a house, it's like a two-story, five-bedroom house. What kind of home do you live in? We have a two-story, three-bedroom house, four-bedroom house, sorry, four-bedroom. Okay. Um, so have you ever invested in solar, either rooftop on your home, on your property, or as part of your, part of your business, or as part of a program through your unit? No, I have not. So could you tell me why you do not have rooftop solar? Did you make the decision or was it made for you? I would have rooftop solar, only we fall under the purview of an energy company that will not buy back the extra power generated, so we chose not to make that investment, hoping that maybe when we retire we won't be living there. So so if you weren't living there and you're moving to another house when you retire, would that be an option Absolutely. for you? So I'd like to talk about rooftop solar adoption in general. So I'm going to give you a map of the United States. If you could mark or circle where you think the most solar rooftop is adopted in the country. Can it cover several states? Mm -hmm. I think this area of the country. Okay. So what makes that community different from, say, the south where we live at? I have found that that area of the country is more forward thinking and they are more willing to accept newer technology a little bit quicker than the rest of the nation. So if you had to describe the people in that community, how would you describe them? Progressive. Um, what do you think people here have more in this area have more solar versus this one? Yes, no. this area versus like our Where side, we are. yeah, um, like the demographic, like the land. First of all, their progressiveness, but where they live, I mean, I have circled the southwest part of the nation. That's where it gets the hottest, the most sun. Mm -hmm. You know, we're talking deserts out there, um, and it's it would be a shame not to take advantage of that if you lived out there. So we're going to do the same thing again, but with the state of Georgia. So just same thing, circle or mark what counties you think in Georgia would have the most first top solar? I would think down here, or even maybe coming across all the way, the southern part of the state. So what makes the southern part of the state different from Augusta? I mean, once again, environmental conditions. You would think that it would have more sun and more exposure. It's closer to the equator. I don't know. I just feel like they have more, more of an opportunity to take advantage of the sun than we do. So what kind of people do you think live in that? Southeast, I would think more progressive individuals. I, I would not know down around there. Albany and I'm not sure. Okay, so do most of your close friends in the state of Georgia have solar rooftop? Why do you think they do or don't? They do not and I think it's a matter of they're happy with the status quo. I just haven't made the, the jump to seeing that it's worth the investment. Okay, so before I go to the next section, and I know you were telling me before we started the interview a little bit more about solar. Is there anything else you'd like to say about it at this point? I, I, I've done a lot of research into mm -hmm. it, and I am all for it, and I think those that can take the biggest advantage of it are large corporations with large you know, rooftop area and schools. I, that's a huge section that, that could be... You know, if they could maybe even do a partnership with, say, Georgia Power or some, and do the solar, that would that would be incredible for both. You know, they would both benefit from it. Okay, so now, if you don't mind, the next section is going to be a few questions regarding your role, the role of food in your day-to-day -day life. So, if you would tell me about your regular day with food, what your meals look like, snacks look like, and how that 
Life is Incorporated. Um, my husband is a type 2 diabetic, and I'm actually on that borderline, so our, our diet is based on a um, diabetic diet, so we have to, we have certain times every day that we have to have something to eat, so we do have three regular meals, um, lower carbs, more vegetables, uh, protein is in between there, um, our snacks are usually no carbs, um, but they have to be timed out just right, otherwise there's, you know, problems with blood glucose levels, so. Um, so for me, I'm at home during the summer, so mm -hmm. it's just like grabbing whatever to eat at the house during the day, and then dinner's like our biggest meal. Um, so could you tell me what would be your go-to meal and why? Wow. Uh, like cooking for the family or just me personally? You personally. Me personally. I'm a vegetable eater, so believe it or not, I can just open a can of vegetables and be happy with mm -hmm. just some vegetables for dinner. So, um, yeah, veggies. So how often do you cook your own meals? A daily. Okay. Um, so with it being daily, is that just for dinner or is it like... Usually breakfast and dinner. Mm -hmm. um, lunch is usually kind of a pack sandwiches kind of thing or something like that. So, are you the only person that makes decisions about the food purchases in your household? No. So, what roles do other people in your household play when it comes to... We all sort of plan together. Um, so, how often do you purchase food for your household? Uh, once a week, we go to the grocery store. So, if you could paint this picture for me, let's say you're taking a trip to purchase food, what does that look like? Okay, as part of our Sunday routine, we leave the house in the morning and we go visit my in-laws uh, for about an hour or so, and then we go to the grocery store after that. Um, and usually uh, our staples weekly, we always end up getting milk and bread, uh, and then whatever meals we've decided to have that week, we go and purchase whatever we need for those. Um, when it comes to feeding your family, what are some challenges that you face? For example, my family is picky eaters, and some people are allergic to certain things that we have to... I don't have picky eaters per se, but my son does not like seafood, and my husband and I do. So mm -hmm. uh, when we want seafood, then we have to make accommodations. Like if we're going to you know, have fish, then you know, we'll make sure we make chicken or something. Mm -hmm. We just take into account that but other than that we all will pretty much eat we'll try anything once 